This is Boxing Tickets NA in association with SB Sports. We're here at the final press conference. Delighted to be joined with the better half, obviously, the Conlon brothers, obviously, the, the main man, obviously. You're, you're getting Michael to do a bit of work this week. Is it strange that you're not having to do the whole card by yourself that Michael's doing a bit with you this week, or is, is it just you doing it all as normal? No, it's good to have him here with us and actually seeing how it's all, how the sausage is getting made kind of thing and experiencing it for, for the future. So you know, we set up Conlon Boxing for when he finishes, you know, to kind of come into this role and do things like this and be part of it. So that's, you know, this is kind of his apprenticeship, i say. Obviously, he's been so used to fighting all these cards and he was sort of saying, you know, at it, Chain Knuckles, obviously, I want to be fighting. You know, the ideal scenario was obviously he would have beat Lopez and he made a headline, this obviously defending his belt. So it's sort of strange territory for him in a way, but I guess for you, it's just business as usual. And what a what a start of the year we've had. This is, this is your third card of the year and obviously you're about to announce your fourth card as well in Dublin. So what a busy busy start to 2023. This is the biggest year probably, I'd say, so far for Colin Boxing. Aye, it's the start of things. It's the start of things moving forward. We're, we're in the building process still with, with how we're working and how we're building things. and um, We're still finding our feet, but we're, um, we're able to put on big shows and small shows and, and kind of keep things moving. Uh, and that's our plan. Um, given the fighters an opportunity, we're, we're saying a bit more, still turning down a lot, but we're, we are starting to kind of branch out a bit and, and saying a bit more fighters. You obviously three new recent signings, obviously one of them on the card, Georgina O'Connor. You obviously the other day announced Alex Dilmangani as well, who obviously I've been speaking quite a lot to and very much a similar person to obviously Anto Kakachi in the fact that he hasn't had opportunities, obviously injuries and everything else, but, but what a talent you've signed and I guess it shows that, you know, where you're turning down fighters because they're just not making the grade, you know, you're signing very, very good top quality fighters and Andrew Manning you'd signed recently as well. So I think of that nine fighters now down to Colin Boxing. Aye, the different stages of their careers, and you know, you like to see them and build them and see the progress moving through the likes of Kurt and Cairn, but Alex is is a bit different. I think one or two will get him active. He needs activity back in his career. Um, it's the one thing he's lacking. He's gone over to Mexico training with Nacho Berstein, training in that world world renowned gym and getting great sparring, world class sparring. He just needs some activity now in his career, and he's in a fantastic division, especially in the UK. You know, we have Ando here in Belfast, we have Joe Cardina, Salva Barrett, a lot of big fights that can be made for him and on the cusp of making. So, yeah, we're just, it is exciting. Um, turning down fighters, not necessarily because they're not making the grade, but just because of where where they're at in their careers and what we're able to provide for them. And, and like, I have no, I can speak from all, the, I can empathise with each fighter. So if I can't give a fighter 100%, we can't, we're not going to send them. So each fighter, I know what they need and what they, they need in this part of their career and what they need at this certain stages. And some fighters need distance, some fighters need arm over the shoulder, some fighters need very limited, little information. Some fighters need a lot of information and it's just, um, it's a... Uh, dissecting yourself that you can give everything to everyone. I guess obviously the dream obviously signing you probably ever had and obviously fighter you've worked with is obviously Potty. Obviously delighted obviously I'm headlining at home for the first time obviously he headlined out in, out in Germany but but obviously what a moment for him obviously it shows that fairy tale moment over six years as a pro obviously now he falls parking his doorstep and obviously getting the, the deliver for people and, and a really really good fight as well I was sort of mentioning to him there that people's forgetting Steve Woodhall's the other half of this main event and he's a really really good credible opponent he's spent a lot of time in America only been beat by Steve Rules who obviously the world title challenger as well so this can be a very sticky one for Paul if he's not on it on Friday night well, most definitely um but that's the usual common thread when you come to Belfast and you're heading in Belfast. You are the focal point. Um, so kind of people forget about the opponent, but this fight is a real great trade fight. And it, it worries me because I know how hard the fight is. It's the first time in Paddy's career that he is now the hunted. He's not the hunter. He is the hunted. He has a lot more to lose. He's number four in the world. He's in his own back garden. The pressure is on him to carry the show. Pressure's on him to deliver, to, 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 like, to look good doing so. So it's a different mindset, which he is embracing. And that's what's given me confidence. And I'm really, really excited about to see how he performs on it. All the other times, he's taken an opportunity. He's going to Germany. He's fighting Sean McGlinchey at 24 hours, or, hours notice. He's taken uh, behind, his, behind closed doors a, a fight against Mickey Ellison when he really didn't need to. All fights like that, you kind of... Different mentality. This mentality, you are 
having to be a bit more wary of what's coming at you. Someone is coming, looking at you, poking holes in your game plan, poking holes in you and has a lot of time to look at you, you're being haunted. And I guess in some ways you can obviously take a good or take a bad and Potty's always been downplaying himself as like an underdog sort of mentality. He's never got ahead of himself. I guess the real test probably going to come on Friday to see if he's, he's really prepared for these next bigger steps. It could be, you know, afterwards he wants to put on a performance on Friday night so that people stop saying he's high risk, you know, low reward sort of thing, you know, like that. Or, you know, he wants to obviously get these big fights, but I guess he obviously has to deliver, get the win first and foremost against Steve Woodhall, but obviously look good in doing so. He has to put it all the noise that we are on the cusp of something big. We are on the cusp for him. Um, we are we're really looking to do big fights for him. We're really in touch with this in Madison Square Garden with Berlanga. We're speaking about different fights and you know WBA World Title was in touch and distance. But all that evaporates if he doesn't overcome Steve Woodall. And again, people now are looking to him to overcome Steve Woodall in a, in fashion. So he has that pressure that he's never had before. And this is, I think he'll excel in it, but it's also, it's make or break for, uh, for a fighter when you get to this stage. Sometimes you can't handle it, some people can. And this is where if he's kind of going to enjoy it, you know, Ramit Mullen singing him out, you know, he gets a big fan for it, he gets a big night. This is a night that he's been craving for a long time. You know, we were looking at doing him in the Ulster Hall, but Lewis went to the headline slot. He was annoyed about that. He he went back and worked on himself. He went back to, and kind of still took big fights. We got the opportunity in Germany. Now we're here. Now we're here. And it's all on him. All on him. All eyes are on him. Great, obviously, main event as well. And obviously, Sean McCormigan's former European title challenger, Alejandro Moya. Um, obviously, he seems to be a very defensive minded fighter. Obviously, he holds a high guard, very hard to hit. I guess, obviously, in some ways, it's Sean making sure he doesn't see red mist in the fight, which you probably never really see. But another really good task, and, and Moya was a really good amateur as well. So I guess it's these challenges Sean wants now in his career. He wants bigger fights, he wants paydays, he's bought a house, he wants to pay it off. Really good test for him, but the Falls Park's been good to him. It was where he came back from after the Gwyn fight and rekindled mm -hmm. a sort of love affair with boxing again. So another good test for him before he obviously looks to bigger fights himself. Again, he can't look past it though. Moya is a really legit challenger. Um, the EBU title is really hard to win. It's when you win it, you win it with, you have to come through a tough test. And he only lost on a split decision. So it's a real tough fight. He's relocated, he's training with Wayne Batten now, who's going to have a more aggressive approach, seeing Sean Moore up close. Um, he was unfortunate in the corner against uh, Anto in May 27th with, with the Polish guy. Um, so he's coming over, hopefully on the wrong end of the decision that you're over here. I've obviously sort of heard sort of rumours of obviously a potential opponent for Kieran. I've sort of spoken about it today as well. Sort of surprised by it, and obviously the fact that Samuel Mason, obviously he obviously fought Paddy Donovan in the three arena in Dublin. Is, is it obviously looking like Samuel Mason could be an opponent for him on Friday night? And it's a really good statement they make of obviously moving Kieran to the next level. It is, it is, and it's a testament to Kieran as well to take an opportunity like this short notice as well. We were looking at getting them out in uh, Callum Smith, Bird of BF's undercard. And um, we adapted on the fly and put him in on this. We're hopeful then for something in October in Boston as well. But then the end goal being the Irish title fight in December in Galway. So he needs to come through tests like this. This is another opportunity to showcase his talents and say, I'm not just a 5 and 0 prospect. I, I'm higher than seeing him. I'm bigger than a 5 and 0 prospect. He's had a bit of unfortunate uh, luck with, with one or two fights falling through. Uh, one with COVID in New York. May 27th, the guy just missing weight, things like this that he's have to adjust to and uh, outside of the ring kind of adapt to and it's just, just about doing it all, all on Friday night. I'm confident of getting this fight over the line, um, been a bit hard to work with at times but it's it's getting close and we're, and we're nearly there. I was sort of saying to Kieran as well, obviously Potty, he's obviously headlining the card, he had obviously has moments at the start of the career, fights falling through and everything else, obviously the, the knee Obviously, remember, he's obviously fight with the knee and stuff as well. So he's obviously had to come through them negative moments, which has built him up. They, these can be good moments for Kieran, and obviously the fact that it makes him bulletproof that nothing can affect him. And obviously, probably if a Sam Mason fight does happen on Friday night, God help Sam Mason, because obviously Kieran's going to be like a caged animal going in there. Definitely. Been sparring Sergio Garcia, David Avenissian, um, 
Uh, one or two big fitters that came across at a gym. He's been lucky at Lothborough because he's getting a lot of quality work behind the scenes and learning in the gym. So I'm looking forward to seeing him on, on Friday. Really am because a fight like Samuel Mason will test him. Sam will come to fight. Southpaw, first kind of Southpaw, and that's the kind of fight we want. Obviously, the Krog back home as well. Obviously, last time Ulster Hall in 2021. Remember, remember the 5th of November. That's how I remember the date. But, but obviously, um, Lewis back at home. He's obviously had two fights, um, obviously, over in Scotland. Are you obviously delighted to get him back for his first fight, obviously, in Conlon Boxing at home? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, as I said earlier, Billy Nelson has rung me every day about Crocker. And to his credit, Billy Nelson has really took him under his wing has really um, looked after him as his own, babied him to an extent, and uh, has moulded him into a different kind of fighter. And I'm really looking to see this aggressive crack. We have uh, 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 Gerba Mendoza, we know from, from Danny Keaton, and, and I think he has quality to be able to, to cause upsets. Where, uh, like someone like Crock, he is in for a test. And, and this is kind of our last test before big titles again for Crock. He's able to do these fights, he's able to do these title fights, and it's just about getting activity back in his life and activity back in his career, and now we're back. Some people's always been given off, obviously, the fact that, obviously, Lewis... Four packs, or... I mean, four uh, so I'm going to have to know what he did, so everybody knows it's... Uh, You're going up right now, eh? Uh, yeah. Right. Right. Yes. Some people sort of been given off online, obviously, I know Lewis obviously has injuries and everything else over the last you know, year or so, but obviously they expect him just to get back into that sort of title frame. Obviously on their new coach and after that time out of the ring, he's having to have these build-up fights. Well, he's had his couple of fights in Scotland. He's obviously going to get a t tricky test in, in Gurren Mendoza on Friday night. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's getting him ready for the next level. Like I think sometimes fans don't realise that because of what he's been through in Lewis, it's obviously affected mentally as well with being out of the ring. Mm -hmm. But then getting him back in and building them up, building the blocks up in the right way, just means that you prepared him whenever he comes that next step. Oh, it's no point jumping in and, and you're not ready for it. You know, it's very, very easy to make a title fight for Lewis Crocker because he was at that level. But he needed to be ready for it. He needed to be... like When Billy had said to me, he's ready, then I knew he was ready. And he did say for this one, he is ready. But we had already kind of got an eight-round slot in and, and we have something planned for December time for Lewis. And... It's just about building to that stage and, you know, very, very happy with the progression of what we're seeing. First time here as well. Um, yeah, yeah, different kind of tests in front. First kind of fight back, it, it didn't last very long. And a body shot to Julio Julio. Um, Julio, Julio. Julio, Julio I, I kind of got, got him out of there. But then we had a tough, heavier Octavian and, and kind of aggressive and being able to take the punishment a bit more. And now we've a bit a tricky fighter in front of us, so he's got a, a different different um, style in front of him each time, which he'll learn and adapt from, for when he, he has a big fight in December that he's that he's ready to jump straight in. And let, if it was easy, everyone would do it. You know, you, if you take the opinions of everyone outside outside the sport, Mendoza can be a wee bit flashy and stuff as well. Obviously, I remember him obviously a fight and he's sort of showboating, sort of in the background. That can obviously work in two ways, can obviously fire Lewis up even more and, and it just sparks him out in, in dramatic fashion but I guess it's a different wee thing for Lewis to look at obviously if an opponent's going to be flashy in front of him, he's probably the wrong opponent in Lewis to be doing that in front of Oh definitely um, he hasn't faced that kind of fighter in a while so he he has to overcome that and, and figure it out Mendoza is tricky but he also can punch you know, he's not just a, a box mover. He, he can he can carry a bit of a whack in it. So you have to be smart in your and smart aggression. Fergus Quinn, I saw it reading in the news. I think he's taking Stephen Ward's name as a quiet man. He's hard to get a hold of, but obviously he had his title win in December. He obviously had a, a, a sort of he's building a warm up as he as he can't find an opponent at middleweight. Is the plan to sort of by the end of the year, you know, maybe potential of of an upcoming fight, McCormick Dunnigan. Is that what you're looking for, the winner of that, to fight him for the Irish? At the end of the year, we're hopefully an Irish title or an international title for Fergus. Um, he's ready. It's just, he's like a locomotive train. The longer distance is better for Fergus. Harry performs is better for him over the longer distance. And, and when the opponent opens up a bit more, it's better for him also. So I, I know this is kind of a bit of a marking time fight, but May, August again, he needed activity. And then we're in for big fights for Fergus towards the end of the year. Similar to, to, to Lewis in a way, but he's never experienced it, so he's kind of having to, to go through these wee ticking boxes. 
And obviously, uh, I just sort of finally want to touch on it. I think you're about to announce, obviously, Dublin, um, RDS, um, indoor arena. Obviously, it's normally, I think they have the home exhibition and things like that in it. But, but obviously, Dublin, another place to take off. You've done Galway, you've done Belfast quite a few occasions. I'm sure you're, you're intrigued, to obviously, to see, obviously, how Dublin will look on the night's event. venue looks amazing. Yes, um You've announced it before me, so okay. Uh, I'm not I, telling you where I've got my sources from. I, 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 I. RDS um, is made for boxing. It would look fantastic. I'm very, very excited about it. We've had great meetings so far, and we're hopeful to announce in the next few days of, of what we're expecting. So, so I sort of know a, a couple maybe it's, it's going to go on. I think of ideally maybe about three or four potential domestic fights on the card. One of them, obviously, we're having some problems with at the moment, and I'm getting it all ears, is Cronin McCarthy. I've been sort of messaging and saying these two are going at this again. What, what's going on with that? Obviously, was there an offer made to McCarthy? Um, obviously, for the fight, he's obviously saying he was offered three thousand and fifteen percent of ticket sales, and I was going, "What's the problem?" You know, some people obviously will fight for for an Irish title for free. Is, was there an offer made to McCarthy? Is, is that looking like it could be a fight on the card? Not yet, no. I, I know Butch had spoke with either Neil Parr or someone in his team and. I think they they were kind of getting a feel for what was wanted, but no offer has been made for myself. However, I will make an offer this week, and we will know then if if McCarthy really wants it. Kevin Cronin is a very, very unique kind of fighter because he is very ballsy and opportunistic and similar to Paddy. We'll jump in and uh, we'll jump at chances at, at a given chance. I like working with him. We worked with him in Galway and. You know, I would like to work with him here, but we are looking to make that fight. Uh, yeah, we're definitely looking to make that fight. If it can be done, we'll know this week. We'll know this week. We're going to speak to both camps, figure out their expectations, figure out what they want, see if it is doable. I've seen one or two things online, but you know, we haven't made an offer at all. Um, no one has spoke to me from his team. Um, I've got Neil Parr's number now, so I will I will be contacting him this week. Priority obviously is failing, has been for the past past while, but we are we will be six weeks out on on uh, Saturday, and we're looking. We have I think two or three all Irish fights confirmed already, but we're looking to lock in this one. I, I really like the fight. I really like the clash of stages. I really like hard. I don't like the overly back and forth the bitterness because it can turn sour. Um, but I do think there is a lot of needle a lot of fire beneath both of them and Cronin, he engages in that and he drags that out of people and I think McCarthy doesn't lack confidence um, having watched one or two of his fights previously he is he, he, it will be a very hard fight a very very hard fight, it's hard to make out who's the favourite going into it and it's a real intriguing fight from my point of view from promoting the fight I'm very intrigued to see who wins it and, and that's why I want to put it on if McCarthy doesn't want to do it, that's that will be up to them in the end. And if we can't find a number that they're happy with, then we tried. So, so that's potentially one McCormick, Donegan, another one, and then there was obviously talk of Shannon Kelly and Dave Ryan potentially fighting for a title on the card as well. Is that looking like another one? Because we know obviously Thrones fights for the IBO. Well, I know I obviously knew one sort of, um, but is that sort of the idea where we're sort of looking, or am I, am I way off? We're looking, stack it. Uh, we're looking at Luke Keeler. We're looking at Emma Brennan from a Dublin perspective. We're, we're looking at, at them two guys, Thomas Carthy, with we'll speak to Thomas and stuff. So really came to having a great feel, but also having an all-Irish feel and an all-Irish fights and giving the, giving the public what we want. I was good at that with one or two fell through on this, but I'm actually really excited about the ones that we've made for, for Dublin. Um, <clears throat> We most likely will have one or two debuts on the card as well. Um, yeah, it's it's got a bit of everything. We've got a bit of everything. I'm looking forward. I'm very excited and very happy that we were able to do something with Tyrone uh, and give him a big opportunity in Ireland, in Dublin. He's an eccentric character. I would have loved him to have him in Belfast, but Dublin it is, and I think Dublin will be, be, be happy for it and thankful for it. Definitely. Well, listen, we'll not, we'll not go any too f- more on it with the announcements because there's no point you even announcing them if we put them all out there. What are you doing? <laughs> them all um, but obviously, thanks very much for your time as always. Obviously, we will look forward to obviously another, another amazing party in the park on, on Friday night. Is there many tickets still left? I obviously know when I looked, I think there's maybe about 80 left maybe this morning. I have to check, but I think we should be close to sell, sold out at this moment in time. Uh, I know. Big Ian is going round right now to Ticketmaster to see it and, and we're going up. We have a site visit at, at four o'clock just to go over to see exactly what's left. Um, but we're guaranteed for a sellout. Ryan McMullen playing. He'll be singing two songs and then singing party out to the ring. And 
you know, it's, it's different. It's a festival, but also incorporating boxing. So we have to keep that festival kind of feel and make it feel like boxing night is a, a festival. So it's, it's a bit of both worlds and a, a crossing of the worlds. And yeah, I'm excited for it, really excited. It'll be a complete sellout. Different than what we're used to. Obviously, in Michael, we have 10,000 and 12,000 and really, really big nights. But this is building something for the future, building for the next generation coming through and showing them that this is a platform that they can all reach and, and have this opportunity to express themselves going forward. Listen, thanks very much for your time as always, GMM. We'll catch up after the show on Friday evening. Nice one, Morty. All the best, mate.